at Mission, we have a combination um, of what we call permalancers and um, staff um, that kind of make up close to about 50 people with um, on-set services in our daily labs and Q-Take, playback, and uh, more recently as well, some of our previs. We are just one part of the chain. We are a bridge. We like to consider ourselves bridges between the set and the post-production. At the moment, we've got about um, a third um, of our project shooting on Venice and using the new XSCN. The number in pre-production is going way further than the third that we are shooting right now. We've been working with XOCN when it kind of came out in the early days with the F55, but I think it really was the Venice that kind of really created the huge volume of work that we, uh, we are getting. Admission, we need to be really agnostic instead of software manufacturers. So we've, we're processing material from with Colorfront, we're using Resolves, we're using Filmlight, we're using POM4, we're using any software that we are requested to or that fits the, the budget. The support and ubiquity of the whole uh, environment of XOCN has been really good. In any of the steps of the, of the different processes and the different steps that we follow on set from the point of capture, backups, uh, metadata reading and dailies delivery, VFX pools and so on, we haven't found any, any limitations or any problems with XOCN so far. So the great thing about working with the XOCN um, is its flexibility. Right from the get-go we're able to choose um, the colour space and the viewing log that we're working in. Um, so if we're using Sony's own proprietary colour spaces or if we're using the Academy's ASIS as well, uh, we can do that right from the SDK. In terms of colour management, it's very flexible because it's allowing us to adapt to any colour management that we are requested to do, from ASIS pipelines to a standard colour pipelines or legacy colour pipelines as we're starting to call them. Rovio is a mandatory piece of kit in, uh, in either our, our lab or on, a, on our own set uh, services. When they need to send me any files, when we need to send, even to the colorist, send quick reference images and so on, instead of uh, compressing them into a JPEG or a GPX, you can trim it in XOCN and just send it to your colorist. And even on set, you can do it with a little Wi-Fi signal. When you look at the size of the files that you get from shooting um, like 6K on the Venice, uh, and then you look at the fidelity and the quality comparatively, it's, it's a striking. We can, you know, in many cases, um, half or even more than half the storage costs. Where you might use another camera manufacturer, your storage costs will double. First of all, XOCN, uh, it's straight out of the sensor. It is not a, a, a codec, it's not a video codec, which you're going to be most of the time limited to 10, 12 bit. That's what has been keeping the 16 bit linearity out of the out of the sensor even with uh, some other 444 16 bit files codecs you're always going to be already in logarithmic it's not linear data from the sensor we found that it's uh, it's a massive saving compared to a 444 12 or 16 bit uh, codec the cost to entry we're working with XOCN is incredibly low. I think for us, our only investment is the card reader, which is very affordable. Um, if we look at other camera manufacturers, we're having to buy um, software or specifically software licenses and also incredibly expensive hardware just to be able to have the privilege of being able to actually download and handle the material. That's meant that we've been able to pass those cost savings on to production as well. Um, but it affects everybody who works with the, the codec down the line. XOCN's capability of being able to retain high fidelity images while being able to save so much in storage and also reduce the cost of ownership. Our customers can spend uh, more money on creativity, um, whether it's more lights on set or more time in the grade. I think one of the, the great thing about the, the different flavours of XOCN, particularly LT, which is a massive uh, cost saving, it's about half the size of ST. Um, and we've compared ST and LT together and in most conditions they're almost identical. So you can shoot LT for the, the most of the shoot, it's cost saving, and if you've got like a big you know, um, dark scene or a VFX scene that you're, you're more concerned about having the uh, fidelity, then you can, you can crank it up to the next two levels um, as you need. Uh, LT for us has been, has been an, an incredible codec to use for 80% for, for, for of the shoot, at least. It's very, very hard to see or to perceive any difference in the, between the LT and the ST. 
data is money. So there's always a saving. If you've got less data, you're saving money.